Hello and welcome to this demonstration of Gordon and Sweet's reticular stain. So the first step in this staining protocol involves treatment of the slides with an acidified solution of potassium permanganate. The popular theory is that this will actually oxidize some of the glycoproteins associated with the reticular fibers. Now having treated the tissue with the potassium permanganate, when you rinse it off, you will notice that there is a color change. And in order to remove that color from the section, you can just pick up a little bit there, even on my blue glove. We then subsequently treat the slide for a further one to two minutes in oxalic acid. Theoretically this might cause some further oxidation but there's not much evidence for that. Okay so just put it on, give a bit of a shake until it's pretty much lost its colour. Then we rinse that off in tap water followed by deionized water. So this is the first critical step now where it's essential to start removing as much impurities from the tap water as possible before we go into the next step. Okay, so once that's nicely rinsed back and front, I'm probably overdoing it a bit here, just to emphasize it. Then shake off the excess and then we treat with aluminium ferric sulfate otherwise referred to as iron alum. Now depending upon the, which textbook or expert that you listen to this is either behaving as a mordant to help the silver bind to the tissue or as other people refer to it as a sensitizer. Okay, so following that we rinse well in deionized water once again. Now whilst it's important to rinse the slides well before going into the silver, which is the next step, there is evidence to suggest that over rinsing can remove too much of the iron alum and can subsequently result in poor staining. So it's this is certainly a step that is worth doing a bit of experimentation to see how little or how much is too much. But it is um, yeah, certainly important to rinse the slides well in Diana's water before going into the ammonical silver solution. Now there will be a separate video that actually explains how to prepare this. So it's always prepared fresh and should be discarded once you're finished staining. Okay, so that's a, a fairly brief treatment for about 30 seconds. And then just as important as before going into silver, we must re also rinse in deionized water coming out of the silver so as not to form a precipitate on the slide. And at this point, there really isn't much in the way of any color change. So just to demonstrate that, I'll bring it over. I wouldn't normally do this, but I'll bring it over to this paper here. And I'll just put one of the slides in the dish. And um, so this is the critical step to develop the color by reducing the free silver in the section to the metallic silver precipitate. So you might just be able to see a color change on that one. It's caught up in the shadow a bit. I'll try this one separately. So if you see the color change there, these are actually sections of lymph nodes. So they're quite small and fairly round. 
but you'll notice there if I hold them both together there's a, a clear contrast that has developed now if you don't get that then it's a bad sign that something's gone gone wrong somewhere but that looks pretty good so we'll give those slides a nice rinse and then we go to the microscope so this is what you expect to see at this point there is a mixture of dark brown to almost black fibers which are the reticular fibers and then the more golden colored areas are the thick bundles of type 1 collagen there's a little bit of background staining there which is a common problem with this technique you can see within that germinal center some nuclei there are picking up some staining but as we'll see there's ways to try and reduce that okay and that is by using gold toning now the theory to gold toning is that you actually are replacing some of the fine silver precipitate with gold chloride now the gold will actually cause a slight purple hue to be formed in the tissue so the theory is that by that that mixture of purple and uh, brown to yellow will actually result in a more black color okay so with the two metals being bound to the tissue gold being purple silver being brown to yellow you get a mixture of those colors and the resulting outcome is this black to gray and it's an optional step but personally I find it um, cleaner and as you can see there's a little bit less background staining within that germinal center there now the next very critical step is to remove any of the excess free silver, silver salt within the section using sodium thiosulfate. So this will dissolve any of that free silver out of the section and therefore you won't get any further precipitate onto background structures later on. Following that step it's equally important to rinse the slides well to remove that sodium thiosulfate otherwise it could potentially dissolve out some of the silver that is in the section okay now once we're happy with the the rinsing to remove the sodium thiosulfate you can go into any counter stain that you choose to use so in this case we're using uh, nuclear fast red and then we give that a good rinse this particular counter stain requires a fairly lengthy rinsing step just to clear all the the excess and then following that rinsing step then we are ready to dehydrate clear and mount our section now at this point if you wish to fast forward you you may do so I've got some uh, video showing the the outcome at the end but just as a bit of a reminder as to the technique for dehydration and clearing using this manual approach that we've got here with the Copland jars we begin in this case going straight to 70% alcohol because we're coming straight out of water and I'm ensuring that both the slide as well as the forceps are well rinsed at each step so it doesn't take particularly long but just important to pay attention to those rinsing steps opening up the forceps at each change to allow any liquid to drain down and then finally in that last change of absolute alcohol giving it a good rinse and a bit of a tilt the final chance to remove any traces of water before going into two changes of xylene so I won't show that both slides 
but after the second change of xylene and being mounted, this is what we expect to see. So this isn't a bad result. I'm reasonably happy with it. We can see here at the low power, there are some reasonably dark grey to black reticular fibres. We'll move to a higher power in a moment. The nuclear fast red is quite light. It's not overpowering, which is good. So I think we need to go to a higher power here to get a better look at that. Okay, so now moving to the higher power. Those reticular fibres, as you can see, they're very fine and delicate and would be difficult to visualise just in a regular H&E. But here with the benefit of that fine silver precipitate, they're actually outlined quite nicely. There is still a little bit perhaps of background on some of those nuclei, but with the nuclear fast red, that's tending to mask it somewhat. So that's not bad. Now there's a huge variation in outcomes depending upon tissue. And this is a technique that really lends itself to experimentation for people to gain the level of expertise that they need to be able to get to get a good result each time. But that's pretty good.